Let's look at side effects of TMS. For the first industry-sponsored randomized trial, the Neuronetics trial, the most common side effect was headache. 58% of patients in the active arm had a headache, but 55% who had sham also had headache. So headache is very common regardless of whether you're getting active treatment or sham. When we look at the adverse effects, which are at least twice reported as sham, the top two are application site pain and muscle twitching. For application site pain, it was 36% in the active arm and 4% in the sham. This is the pain that's felt when the magnet is activated and there's a physical sensation that something is hitting the head. For muscle twitching, when the stimulation is occurring, you'll see the muscle around the eyes twitch, and sometimes there's facial muscle twitching or jaw movements. Muscle twitching was 21% in the active treatment arm compared to 3% for sham. It took patients about two weeks to get used to the pain and discomfort of TMS. There's a 2018 review of TMS which looked at the common side effects. Sight pain is the most common side effect and was thought to be due to stimulation of superficial nerves or facial muscles. The headache was thought to be due to some of the local scalp stimulation or increased cerebral blood flow. With the 37-minute stimulations, the neck pain was probably because the person was lying in a reclined position for that duration. With the newer intermittent theta burst stimulation time of three and a half minutes, neck pain is not a concern. Less than 2% of clinical trial patients stop because of pain, so the usual recommendation is to use over-the-counter analgesics or switch to a lower-intensity stimulation if there's more pain. A few practical observations. So patients have a hard time describing the sight pain, and TMS is uncomfortable when it's stimulating. Patients who have a history of chronic headaches or migraines might have a harder time tolerating TMS. The lower the motor threshold, the less painful the treatments will be. Men seem to have lower motor thresholds and tend to tolerate TMS better than women. Finding a lower motor threshold or treating a lower motor threshold makes TMS more tolerable. Very few patients stop TMS because of pain, and there's no cognitive impairments with TMS. There's no evidence of TMS worsening cognition. In fact, there's been a lot of interest in whether TMS might help with cognition. There was a 2017 meta-analysis of 18 studies for cognitive enhancements. Overall, they didn't find any specific enhancements on the majority of cognitive tasks. There was some modest improvement for trail-making test performance. One of the limitations noted by the reviews was that the interview for the post-testing was not consistent. In terms of serious side effects, there's always worry about seizures. In practice, it's a very low risk, reported to be 1 in 30,000 treatments. Of the early reports of seizures, one of the cases was the magnet was placed in the wrong location, and another case was related to a lot of alcohol used the night before. A systematic review from 1980 to June 2015 found only 25 reports of seizures during TMS, and potential risk factors were sleep deprivation, polypharmacy, and neurologic conditions. One RTMS-induced seizure reported from the FDA was in a sleep-deprived patient concurrently taking bupropion, sertraline, and amphetamine. None of these seizures were in patients who were taking bupropion. Certainly, if the patient has a history of seizures, it's not recommended to do TMS. Key points. TMS causes physical discomfort at the stimulation site. Patients tolerate the discomfort better about after one or two weeks of treatment. Sight pain, headache, and facial twitching are common. Lowering motor threshold makes TMS more tolerable, but we don't want to underdose.